What I find particularly interesting and really quite moving about Félix de la Concha's project is that it is able to move between the past, that is, in the life stories each survivor tells and the testimony they give, and the present, the portrait, Félix, that you paint of each person today in real time. And in creating a multimedia project where you then videotape both processes, what strikes me as so interesting is how the process of painting, the coming into being of each portrait, unfolds as part of the process of giving testimony, so that both processes are then captured on video. What this means, it seems to me, and this is really my first question for you, is that you, Felix, are both a witness to the testimony. We, incidentally, as viewers of the video, also become witnesses to the act of bearing testimony. But Felix, you are a witness to the testimony and the painter. Can you say something more about this and also about the process of time, of this cre creation of real time in this project? And also, since I, my job now, I know, is truly to interrogate you and to you know, just barrage you with questions, I, I think um, we are probably all interested in hearing about how you first even came to this kind of project. And, um, you know, I, I understand that it wasn't initially in doing these interviews with Holocaust survivors, but in time that has become part of the project. So if you can speak a bit about that process. All right, well, thank you very much uh, for uh, coming here to this event, and uh, thank you for um, every people and every orga all of the organizations that made this possible. Um, so now I'm in the other part of the, <laughs> um, uh, of the fence, let's say, because I'm uh, used to do the, um, the questions, or um, uh, sometimes uh, the thing is in this project, uh, the questions initially are um, uh, very few. I mean, I just start explaining what is the project about, to be on record also this. Um, but, um, I normally ask uh, about the origins of, of the people that I'm, I'm painting, where do they come from, and um, you know, their education, their background. And uh, in many of them, just with these questions, they start to expand and not even asking any other thing. They start to tell the whole story mm -hmm. and the things that they were through, and mainly, of course, focusing on the period of, of, uh, of the Holocaust. Um, the process uh, came uh, through many different steps uh, and other different projects. Uh, I mainly paint uh, architecture on, uh, or uh, sceneries in uh, urban sceneries, landscapes, uh, uh, but on the spot, always there. And I was very attracted for the fact that uh, of the present moment that of, of capturing something that um, uh, you have to uh, to get in this particular moment that is not going to be repeated anymore. For instance, I did a project in uh, Pennsylvania, in, in Pittsburgh, where it was 365 views of the Cathedral of Learning. Mm -hmm. And that was um, a little painting mm -hmm. of 11 by 9 inches, and every day I painted a different painting. Uh, if you know Pittsburgh, it has this uh, Cathedral of Learning, which is a neo-Gothic tower that is very prominent, and you can see from many uh, different angles. So I, I painted this always this element of the tower, but in dialogue with, um, with the surroundings. But I like this idea of the moment, of the present thing that, um, uh, because the, when some people say you paint what you see, I mean, that's, that's not um, accurate because it's actually impossible because what you see and you try to capture is already gone. Um, and, but I, I, I projected that in this moment, which is called a la prima, at once, uh, than just in, um, in this moment of, uh, could be no longer than two hours because the sun was different, the shadows, everything. So, but you have to capture as much as you can, as, as much as accurate as I tried to do, um, but something that, that, that was going to be uh, banished in another day, so I, I didn't come to the same spot. I just had to paint another painting. And so that is very connected with the project of portraits because it's about the element of timing. So there are two main elements, let's say, in painting, which is timing and light. Um, and these two elements I try to um, uh, 
exploit them in a way of the medium that uh, has the painting um, because versus photography, uh, which captures an instant normally, um, let's say painting embrace timing in a way because uh, needs this mm -hmm. timing mm -hmm. to do it. So and because mm -hmm. I needed this timing uh, for the sitters, I have this excuse to have to consume all this time with them because I have to finish my painting versus maybe a photographer that captures other things. Mm -hmm. And I mean, I admire photography, of course, it's another interesting medium, but had different components on it. Um, the project with portraits started as an experiment, not with Holocaust survivors. I did a project before in, uh, for the most in Spain, asking people from the cultural world. And, um, uh, and I asked them initially about their approach to painting. So I, I painted uh, writers or filmmakers or philosophers or um, any kind of uh, people involved with the cultural world. And I wanted initially to know about their approach to painting. But from there, because I needed, I mean, I, I uh, settled these things, this timing of two hours, mm -hmm. um, they start to uh, tell about the process of creation, the context, the connections between their fields and my field that he was painting. And so because I was there painting, um, so a philosopher or, or, or I don't know, historian can say, well, painting is dead, uh, so it went better because now it's photography. <laughs> but I was there, so, and I was alive. <laughs> Um, painting was evolving. Um, and so the thing, the interesting thing is that from that, that was the experiment in itself was to see what kind of uh, thing I could accomplish having the uh, paying a lot of attention to a conversation. Mm -hmm. uh, so that was this uh, part as, uh, in my brain, maybe there was this activity of visual part and then the verbal part mm -hmm. and how they collided. I mean, I just wanted to know what kind of painting I could accomplish with these components. Um, and so from there I realized, well, uh, not it was just interesting in the process and also the painting itself and the results because uh, people were moving, uh, so it was not like the classical portrait in which the people are um, quiet and uh, trying to smile because they want to appear mm -hmm. like in a very um, handsome looking or <laughs> so here was a different approach um, and the, normally in a portrait the commissioner is the one that wants to be portrayed and wants to be you know the, being uh, so that was not this component in the painting but the interesting thing also was that the testimonies were very unique uh, because um, it was this particular moment in which two people are in a room mm -hmm. by themselves and, and so it's this, uh, the conversations were very intense and that's what deals me to do the project with the Holocaust survivors because the testimony was very unique in this mm -hmm. kind of format. Um, and so here I arrived to this project and uh, because I, I, I thought, uh, you know, I, I, I was curious about this, this, this period in history, but also I wanted to know these testimonies from the people that uh, we have the luck that uh, we still um, uh, have them around. And so uh, we, we are maybe the last generation that have this uh, challenge, this privilege of, of having that. And so that's because I uh, suddenly started this new project with Holocaust survivors. Mm -hmm. Well, I want to pick up on what you said um, earlier that um, that you cannot paint what you see because by the time you paint it, it is already gone. And it seems to me that it is what makes your project so interesting and I think what makes it work in, on so many levels is that that similar elusiveness or slipperiness of memory and of, of making testimony um, is somehow captured in the elusiveness of the medium of painting. Um, I don't know if that is, if that makes sense. So that the two processes together um, seem to me to both address the uh, perhaps both the necessity as well as the impossibility of both giving testimony and bearing witness to the Holocaust in this case, and also to the act of portrait. Painting. I mean, it reminds me. There's, you know, sort of the axiomatic expression of this is um, was written by the French Jewish philosopher Sarah Kaufman, who said, you know, the the two um, the the two sentences: How can it be said, and how can it not be said? And in a sense, 
it seems to me, what I, what I like about the project is that it somehow captures um, the elusiveness that lies between Kaufman's two questions. Um, so I have another question, though. Um, you have written elsewhere that you were consciously thinking as you were doing these portraits or beginning to do the portraits of the surrealist process of automatic drawing to do the portraits, to see what kind of portrait would emerge under these very precise conditions as you just described them, the two hours, although I understand sometimes it stretches a bit um, longer than that, but more or less two hours are over. And so, um, so that once the two hours are over, the portrait is done, even if it isn't really fully done. So I was wondering if you could say something about the state or the potential state of incompleteness of the portrait under these conditions that you've described, and whether or not you might see that as being parallel to the ongoing nature of Holocaust testimony. And also, I would add the, the, the always incomplete nature of Holocaust testimony. So is the portrait ever finished? And is the act of giving testimony ever done? And I think we know that the answer is, of course, no. <laughs> And I think your project a asks us to reflect in really interesting ways about that. Is there anything you'd want to say to that? Well, uh, ironically, the question, I mean, the answer here is no. Is, I mean, it's yes. Mm -hmm. It's complete. Right. Uh, <laughs> that can, uh, uh, find, I mean, uh, looks contradictory to say that right. it's finished. Because the thing is, uh, I mean, I had these questions, for instance, I did a project with um, uh, with a symphony uh, the, uh, in Toledo, in Ohio, with the Toledo Symphony Orchestra, and I had to paint these. Um, I was in the middle of the orchestra painting uh, the musicians, meanwhile the concert, and I had to uh, mm -hmm. do the painting, meanwhile the concert, and the people could see in a big screen the, mm -hmm. what it was uh, going, uh, what was happening. And so before we have a presentation, and uh, there was this woman that asked me, so uh, what happened if you don't finish the painting when uh, mm -hmm. the concert is gone? And so, and uh, I remember a quote from Picasso that say, a painting is never finished. Mm -hmm. And But the thing is, remember this quote, I say, well, in this case, I know it would be finished when it will be finished, because it's over when the concert is over, and so I have to give it up, and it's done, and so I cannot continue it, so I know it's finished. <laughs> yeah. yes. it's the but it's, uh, but yeah, the question is also, I know, I mean, Leslie, that um, you are asking about the, um, let's say, the aim to continue, because I still can uh, get something more, or um, do something more accurate if I will have more time. Um, let me let yeah. me interrupt. No, no, that is not my question. <laughs> I, I wanted to say um, that I think it's the very incompleteness that's the richness of this project. Okay. Yeah, but I mean, so, it's, it's, a, it's just a, maybe a, a game of words. I mean, right. you can say it's complete when uh, when the time is over. So, uh, yeah. well, let's say I mean the two hours thing. I mean, this is an important element in the first ex uh, mm -hmm. let's say experiment that mm -hmm. I did uh, when I painted these uh, people from the cultural world. I um, I was kind of a street with the two hours more or less. Mm -hmm. uh, in this project, I mean, every project is different. Uh, mm -hmm. Of course, I mean you cannot be rigid, uh, mm -hmm. especially if you are talking talking about um, something, uh, an art or an aesthetics. Or, um, and so here, um, the people sometimes, I mean, how can you cut uh, a conversation or something that is, I mean, when someone is telling you a story, uh, something so relevant, I mean, sometimes it expanded to even more than three hours. But it was not me, it was also, you know, the sitter who was uh, also uh, settling this timing because, um, uh, I mean, uh, uh, of course here versus the other um, uh, first project in which I, 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 I mean, was more uh, like uh, what kind of painting how can I, that I can accomplish here. Here the testimony was uh, very, uh, I mean, um, 
uh, I mean, the, the painting started to get more subject to the testimonies. And the testimony was like the most important element in a way. Um, and, and so it was subject to the testimony. And, and sometimes they expanded, and I, I, I didn't want to, 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 of course, to interrupt them. And for me, even better, I have more time to continue the painting. Because some people, it's funny, I mean, how timing, we conceive timing, and when the notion we have, because when I say to some people, okay, you have to be there for two hours, they can kind of scare, but in the moment and when they are starting it, and when we finish, sometimes they don't realize, oh, it's gone already, and looks like we just, uh, I mean, the, the, uh, so sometimes I, I don't even say how much time we're going to do, uh, and, and besides, I, I, I always say, you know, you can take all the breaks that you, you, you need if you want to stop at any moment for whatever reason, is not a problem. I want you to be comfortable. So, of course, I mean, uh, people of, of uh, they were for the most of certain age, and so you have to accommodate to the circumstances. Um, and so, uh, finally, I don't know if I'm answering your question. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, but the thing is, the complete. The, the, it's, it's true. I always um, uh, like this beauty of that. Uh, uh, of that I try to capture a reality, let's say. Uh, I try to be accurate uh, with, uh, with the face, let's say, that I'm painting. But um, it, it's always, always these limitations of, of your skills, of your timing, of everything. And so you are going to um, create another reality. And, uh, and so there is a resemblance. Mm -hmm of uh, the people, and I hope to think that, and well, the examples are there, and here also you can compare because the, of, uh, of the most of them are here, so you have the models, you have the sitters, and you can compare with the portrait, so, so you see the resemblance, but um, it's, uh, do, I mean, it's subject to the interpretation, and, and so the, also this is some kind of equivalent with the story of someone that is trying to be accurate with the memory, trying to uh, transmit uh, their experiences. They are trying to give us uh, this uh, memory that they have um, uh, with, uh, for the most, mm -hmm. so much effort, you know, and um, I'm so grateful to these uh, survivors that have been, uh, you know, uh, having that like, uh, also, uh, like, in, they, they feel it uh, like a duty to do, and, 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 and it's important because, I mean, they realize it's, it's, it's relevant to pr preserve this memory, mm -hmm. and so we are grateful to this effort, because for them, you know, to, to remember this again, it's, it's, it's uh, you know, it's a painful thing that they have to go to, to, to revive all these things. But so they try to be accurate, but it's, it's of course contaminated. You cannot avoid that, even with their best will that of, 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 of things that, I mean, memory is very tricky. I mean, there are many studies on that. And so uh, for a historian, maybe they can, I mean, here, uh, Dora was giving this example about it was 20 feet, was 27, was, uh, I mean, that, that was a very, very nice example of how we don't know. I mean, I mean, we we have to rely in this in these testimonies. But the thing is, well, I in this project, I like it. Um, I mean, I was very interesting at the historical facts that they were telling. But for the most, what I was interested because this is about art. Also, uh, I mean, it's a still uh, an artistic project. Is about um, how do they express their their emotions, their feelings, how they've been through that. I mean, it's a personal thing. It's a personal journey besides, you know, the, the historical facts that, that they are telling you about. And that, that, that was the most, I mean, thing that was appealing to me, that I wanted to know uh, from the first hand, their emotions, how they've been shaped by these events, how they approach to religion, how they approach to, um, to also how they, for instance, see the, uh, the, the representation of the Holocaust. I mean, you have the, how did they see the movies? Uh, do they go to the movies about the Holocaust? How do they read about them? How do they have interest to, to do these things, uh, I mean, to, 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 to remember through other um, testimonies. Uh, I mean, all these things were very interesting to me. I, mean, very, yeah. I think this is also what makes the work so rich. It is, um, there is a sense watching these um, that the people who you are painting are doing both the very hard work, the labor, in a sense, of remembering, while you are also working. So that was, I was very struck at the end of the video with Gus Gutman, who unfortunately is, um, has, has passed away. 
um, where he says that you captured him as he was trying to recall something. So um, it was that you captured the process and the difficulty of recalling and remembering. And this is what, what is highlighted, um, what is highlighted there. Can you speak a little bit about, though, the video part of it and the split screens and um, also just, so who was actually taking the video? <laughs> the, the... Um, well, uh, I was taking the video in, uh -huh. in, in a project, for instance, that I did at the Hood Museum of Art that was, uh, the topic was on conflict and reconciliation mm -hmm. on the Dartmouth area. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually offered me to have a cameraman uh, filming and mm -hmm. doing the, the, um, the thing. But um, uh, that's where I learned to do some video, uh, which is, uh, I mean, very uh, lucky that now it's, it's a very easy um, uh, to, with the digital media and all this developed, technological developed, um, to handle, um, mm -hmm. I mean, I never done a video before, even a home video, um, mm -hmm. so, <laughs> uh, but uh, the thing is I didn't want to lose the intimacy of uh, being, uh, as much as I could, to lose this intimacy of being just uh, both of us together in the room uh, by ourselves, uh, so mm -hmm. having a third person would be, um, well, it would be a different approach, and so I, I mm -hmm. Um, and so the, 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 but that was resolved, uh, luckily, because um, the thing that I needed is to have a, a, a camera in a tripod, a steady, um, it's always all the same frame, mm -hmm. uh, and the camera capture in the help of the frame, well, you have seen the videos there, um, so in uh, half of the screen is the canvas, the, the, in the beginning is a blank canvas, and in the other half is, uh, is the person who is uh, talking, and, mm -hmm. and, and so I just, uh, I have to remember to plug on the the, the video at the beginning, mm -hmm. and, the, and then to uh, to well to to, um, to turn it off when we, mm -hmm. when, when we are done. But uh, <laughs> it's something uh, as simple as that. And uh, so I have another device actually for for audio audio recording because mm -hmm. uh, it's more accurate than the one from the camera. So I just have to remember that there have been a few cases uh, that I rem didn't work very well because <laughs> I was by myself. I mean, I have to be concentrating in so many things that I was a um, kind of challenge in a way because I have to be painting, concentrating, but also be aware that everything, all the devices are working fine. I mean, the first actually projects were with uh, less technology, I have mm -hmm. to go with two computers, and that was uh, a nightmare. <laughs> mm -hmm. Now it's uh, easier. I mean, now I'm more mm -hmm. comfortable with the media. But that was also another part of the project that I had to be concentrating not only in the painting, but that everything was working fine, even mm -hmm. when it was simple. And it was. I mean, I tried to minimize the uh, the problems, but still, I mean, I have to be um, involved in every all the aspects mm -hmm. of the video. Mm -hmm. So I'm curious if you could speak a little bit about um, you as the listener, as the people sitting are telling their stories, and how, you know, there's a certain rhythm to the language that people use to tell their story. Many of these, of course, are stories that um, I would imagine all of the people whose portraits you painted have told their stories many times in different venues to different audiences and so on. But there is, I've, I've noticed, certainly looking at this and working with the video history project of the Shoah Foundation, there's a certain rhythm to the language. And I'm wondering if you, as a painter, um, if somehow the tempo or the rhythm, this comes back to this question of time and the painting, of the painting in real time as the person is speaking. But I'm curious about whether or not the language and the story that was being told, um, if there were particularly painful or horrifying moments, how that affected the painting. To what, to what extent were you aware of that part of the process on your own painting? Hmm. Um, oh, well, yeah, of course it uh, affected. There is um, an aspect now that I'm thinking also is important that uh, for the most um, they were done in English, that is uh, my second language or third one. Well, um, but um, in, uh, I think it has a, also um, an interesting aspect on it because uh, they, knowing that my limitations in English and well, for them, uh, you know, also coming from other countries was uh, not their 
um, uh, native language, but still, well, many were had been uh, the most of their lives practically here in America, so they, they, they speak uh, quite much, um, of course, a better English than my <laughs> mine. Uh, but so it has a beauty on it too because they try to be understood, and because um, maybe my English is limited, they, I mean, uh, they, they can, I mean, that can be compared like if when they are talking with a, to a kid, you know, and so they use uh, <laughs> a different, I mean, it's unconscious in a way, but it's still there, you know, it's still there, and, and I think it has some kind of beauty on that too. But of course, yeah, there, um, that's something that many people ask me about how can I uh, continue painting when I'm listening to uh, horrendous stories sometimes, and and um, I became. To, I mean, I, I realize more and more that uh, for me, to the painting in a way uh, gives me um, like a shelter or a protection to that, and and that's very clear. For instance, when I um, even when I follow with a lot of attention and intensity what they are telling, it's not that I'm distracted because I'm painting because I mean in this process. As I say, I mean, visual and verbal goes for, from different and uh, collide, but I mean, uh, I, I sometimes think that I can pin, uh, pay, uh, pay even more attention when I'm painting than when I'm not. <laughs> but the thing is, when I go through the recordings or yes, even when I'm <coughs> telling stories that I remember when, I mean, sometimes I get very emotional, not in the same way with that when I'm painting, you know. Um, and uh, so that's, I think, in a way, helps me to be painting, to have this thing of that I have to be concentrated on to be also more uh, involved in the story, but without uh, collapsing, let's say, uh, listening to this uh, story sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right. um, I'm interested if you can say a few words um, about how Painting the, the portraits um, of Holocaust survivors is different for you than, I mean, you addressed earlier, for instance, the, the question of the photograph and the role of photography in Holocaust aesthetics. Um, but I'd like if you could speak about what it is then that you are really trying to capture as your painting. <laughs> That's a very broad question. Um, uh, well, um, as an interviewer, I realize sometimes when you do some questions like that, it's kind of tricky because uh, you don't know where to start with. Because the thing is that for the most, I mean, the most important thing, if I, I mean, I try to be accurated with your question, I mean, to answer your question, mm -hmm. be, uh, um, and then, uh, uh, then to be accurate, I must say that uh, the most important thing that I see on that maybe is not uh, easy or impossible to transmit uh, in words because it's something very intuitive. And maybe the things that you try to capture is the things that, I mean, or uh, it's, you, you want to be surprised, let's say. Um, uh, I mean, the, 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 what makes you work also is um, that uh, you will be discovering things um, that uh, you didn't expect, uh, uh, that there is always surprises. That uh, and so every story, even I have done uh, well in Holocaust. I've done over 40, but I mean as a whole, I've done hundreds of portraits already with all these uh, projects all together. And still with a f with an ex. Uh, yesterday I did Dora, um, and it's always. Um, I mean I, I feel completely naked. I feel uh, like um, also even having. I mean I'm quite nervous before because. Um, it, it, you don't know how it's going to go, and uh, and in uh, you want to accomplish something worth uh, to 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 uh, uh, and in uh, and you have these uh, like the actor has these uh, you know uh, panic uh, scenic panic you know you know about that before he has going to the stage, um, which uh, then once you are there in the stage like an actor I mean is is uh, you you forget about this panic I mean it's gone and then you are in, so involved that but just the moment
moments before, even days before, and just uh, planning. And um, you fear, um, you have these fears. Uh, even I have done some hundred, so mm -hmm. <laughs> you never get. Uh, so you are always out of your comfort zone. Um, but that's also the, the the nice thing about that. It's always uh, something unexpected, and all the different stories are so unique and uh, how they express these stories. The stories were, are different, of course, but also how they communicate it, how this per I mean, is so personal that uh, everyone is so unique. Mm -hmm. You know, you've also written, though, that um, when you interview, that you try to not be very present, not to ask many questions, not to be intrusive, I think was the word that you had used, and yet, of course, you're so very present as the portrait painter during the process. So can you talk a little bit about, a bit more, about um, listening and receiving the testimony that is being given, the technique that you're using, I mean? Yeah, well, I, I, I want to be as neutral as I can. Of mm -hmm. course, it's impossible because every question uh, that you ask means um, that you are showing part of yourself, why you are asking this question and no other. Um, but I try not to give my opinions. Um, um, uh, I mean, another project here maybe is more uh, clear because it's the testimony and the story, and so you are like a, more like a witness. But uh, let's say mm -hmm. if I'm doing a project on politics or things, I mean, how cannot you be not involved at or? Um, uh, which also raise other questions in these portraits, in these projects that, uh, for instance, uh, versus um, maybe this is off of your um, question, but I think it's important too, that, um, I mean, how much uh, freedom or, or allowance will I have to do portraits? Uh, I mean, could I portray, let's do an, in other words, can I portray, will be able for me to portray any person or not? I mean, for a journalist, maybe the question mm -hmm. is, I mean, the answer is yes. I can interview even a terrorist. I can interview someone that uh, is not, uh, that you are not sympathetic with. Mm -hmm. But here, because there is the component of the portrait, that's mm -hmm. something different. I mean, I won't, I don't know if I will be so comfortable doing a portrait, because in, in our culture, to do a portrait means like, to do a homage to someone. And even if here I just try to do a portrait in a different context with a different meaning as well, there is always this component. And so, uh, so I, I, I will have more many doubts really about if I would be able to paint anyone. <laughs> yeah. I remember uh, sitting there and you were, you were painting and there was a recording machine in front. Did you ask me questions or did I just talk? <laughs> well, yes, I asked some questions. <laughs> and you answered them very well, sure. Well, I, uh, I was utterly amazed at, uh, at your talent. I, uh, I really admire it and uh, you did a beautiful job. So <laughs> where, where did you learn how to do this? <laughs> Uh, well, I, uh, yeah. since I was a kid, I like it to paint and... Uh, a natural uh, talent. Yeah. Tell me they saw my painting and they recognized me. <laughs> so that's nice to hear. And um, uh, I was a child when I was deported and it was kind of good to talk about it and to reminisce in and, and so, and such circumstances when my, pa pain, my picture was done. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well, as I say before, I, I, cannot, I, I, I cannot paint what I see. That's, that's impossible by itself because <laughs> it's always um, an interpretation. I mean, we are um, looking, I mean, perception is so complex that we cannot imagine. I mean, we are looking at this, uh, for instance, it's uh, three-dimensional besides in time, four dimensions or more. And so you have to 
put that in a in a flat canvas. Uh, so it's always, I mean, we are used to this um, interpretation, but it's always a symbolism in that. I mean, and so it, it has to be always an interpretation. And the contrast of light also has to be um, interpreted. So every people, uh, that will paint even if it would be a skillful uh, painters they the, the, the results always will be different and we will see that every painting has their own style and uh, every painting they do is different and so uh, it's always an interpretation and here also is the component of the testimony which is um, always of course is is, is uh, relevant and um, gets uh, the painting in a different way I'm curious to ask Felix if he ever had the experience of painting somebody without the story and then painting them again hearing their story. Uh, well, not in this project. In other ones, uh, yes, I remember at least some people, well, maybe some friends that then uh, I asked them to sit for me for these other projects in uh, like the one I first did because, uh, I mean, for instance, that, uh, the first project with uh, people from the cultural world, I mean, some of them, I knew them and, and so they participated and I uh, remember a few that I painted in other projects before without uh, the testimonies or the, well, the testimony in that case was not a testimony, it was more a kind of debate or, <laughs> uh, or questioning about their process or their activities, so it was a different project. Uh, I mean, in Holocaust survivors, no, I didn't know anyone before. Uh, I'm really grateful, of course, to this project that I, I have um, knowing these wonderful people and stories and so, so, so touching and so human and so, I mean, that's really rewarding uh, even when it's, it's, I mean, a long process and um, a lot of work, but I mean, it's really um, uh, very uh, rewarding, really, really. <laughs> Actually, now I remember, and, and uh, I mean, it was not in this project of Holocaust survivors, but I painted actually uh, a woman. That was a commission that uh, really I do commissions, but um, this happened that uh, she was also a Holocaust survivor. And so first I painted her in silent or just talking on, on other things. And so they told me later that she had been also through this period and these things. And so I painted, and they asked me actually to do two paintings because they wanted them for the relatives, two paintings of her. And the other one, I went through the recording and it was very different one to the other because the expression and everything was completely different, different, different paintings, so different. Yeah, yeah, that's an example I didn't remember. <laughs> But in fact, it happened, yeah. What drew you to this? Yes, that's a very interesting question because um, I, I come from Spain. Um, actually, the population of Jews in Spain is very small. Uh, I think probably about 50,000. But the heritage of, uh, of, the, of, uh, of Judaism in Spain is very, very strong. I mean, it's, uh, well, you know, the, the story in Spain. Uh, and, and there are people uh, talking in Ladino. I, I, I portray, for instance, uh, Slomo Venezia, which is the last, I think, some their commando life uh, is Italian. Uh, now um, he lives in Italy, and I did it in Italian, but he talked it also a little in Ladino. <laughs> so the the connection between, uh, I mean, being from Spain, my uh, uh, heritage also is important, and uh, in, and and also is something universal. I mean, it's something that every people. You or Gentile, I mean, it's interesting at, uh, and uh, but yeah, it's an interesting question. Why? Uh, but I mean, the thing is, uh, you know, actually, uh, moments before I was remembering that. Uh, in fact, I, I mean, I never have said that, but I was for the most a good student when I was in elementary school. But the the subject that I hated the most was history. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and so it's ironic in a way, uh, but it's because I think uh, that's important. I think it's because when I was um, when I was learning history, uh, they were teaching me like 
with a lot of data that, that didn't have any mean to me. So it yeah, was kind of exercise of memory of things that had any no, that have any connection. So in a way that probably that makes sense. That was like a depth that I had with history that I never had a proper approach. And so that's because it's so important. These people that you know, many of them I I portrayed. They were in the schools. They were teaching all the students, the young generations. I mean, that, that's really important that they, that the history has to be alive, that it has to be with a meaning, not just the data and things. And that, that's because probably makes sense that, uh, you know, I had this <laughs> problem before and now, uh, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm doing this.